Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we have an older GPU or at least it's a GPU that is quite long in the tooth now. This is a GTX 750 Ti that I picked up on eBay recently for just under $100. So we're gonna take a look at it today to see if it can still hold up in modern gaming, both eSports and AAA titles here in 2021. And then to answer basically the ultimate question in a GPU market that is completely terrible, is a GTX 750 Ti worth your money right now at right around that $100 price point? So the GTX 750 Ti, there's actually a lot to like about this GPU. Even here in 2021, over seven years after this thing originally launched, by the way, at a pricing of right at $150 originally, I just mentioned, obviously, I picked mine up for just under $100, but looking at eBay this morning, it looks like you're likely going to pay a little bit above $100 to get a typical GTX 750 Ti. But like I said, there is a lot to like about it, starting with it is a standard double width card. It's not any sort of uh, super thick card or anything like that. So many ITX systems are gonna be perfect for a card like this. In addition to that, a lot of these 750 Ti's are this lower profile style with just one fan and the PCB ending basically right after the PCIe slot. And there is very rarely an actual external power connector. Occasionally you will find a 750 Ti with a six pin power connector, but for the most part, most of these 750 Ti's are just powered purely from the PCIe slot. So you don't really have to worry about extra uh, power supply connectors or possibly SATA to PCIe adapters or anything like that to power one of these cards. If you don't have a power supply that has any extra connectors, then this may be a good option for you. Additionally, and unlike the GTX 1060s from EVGA that have the single fan design, this single fan design is actually a quiet fan and the card has absolutely no issue keeping temperatures under control. Now, uh, the seller was kind enough to go ahead and replace the thermal paste before actually selling this card. So this is, at least in theory, I haven't actually checked it out. This is, in theory, new thermal paste. And as you'll see in the gameplay footage, the temperatures of the 750 Ti are very, very good. And I will say anecdotally, the card was virtually unheard even on an open test bench if it's inside of a PC case yeah, you're probably not gonna hear this thing over things like uh, case fans or power supply fans whatsoever. So this card, if you're into quiet PCs, this card may be a good option as well. Now for the test system today, we're using the standard test bench that I've been using for a while now. We have the Ryzen 5600X paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory run in a dual channel configuration. And uh, yeah, the 5600X is gonna be plenty of CPU horsepower to not be bottlenecked whatsoever by a 750Ti. We are testing most of these games in 1080p low settings or low presets. You'll see the uh, annotations on the gameplay to see exactly which uh, games have those settings. The one game that does deviate from that is Cyberpunk 2077. In that case, we're running the game at 720p because I didn't even think it was worth trying at 1080p. And as the results came out, yeah, I was basically right. So with that, we are jumping right into Fortnite. 1080p, the low preset, we saw an average FPS of 96, a 1% low of 69, and a 0.1% low there of 35. And anecdotally, I won this game. It was not a hindrance at all to be running the 750 Ti on these settings with Fortnite. Uh, at the very beginning of the game, I thought I might see a little bit more of a stuttery experience than I'm used to, but everything smoothed out once the game got into it, and I basically forgot that I was playing on a budget seven-year-old GPU and just basically played the game and did eventually come away with the Victory Royale. So I cannot complain at all with the 750 Ti. If you're just looking to play Fortnite, this may be a good option. And then we move over to Overwatch at 1080p low preset. We saw an average FPS of 118, a 1% low of 85, and a 0.1% low of 79. And this is kind of my go-to game for seeing whether a GPU is even going to be able to run uh, other titles in particular because Overwatch is not only an easy to run title but also delivers very consistent frame times. So often you'll see an average FPS 1% low and 0.1% low in a somewhat low spread where the uh, FPS that is getting delivered are all just super smooth. 
So with this title, uh, the 750 Ti was perfectly good and playable, and I have absolutely no complaints playing Overwatch just like Fortnite with the 750 Ti. Then we move to a few more demanding games, starting with The Witcher 3, which is not a brand new title, but still is a demanding game here even in 2021. At 1080p on the low preset, the average frame rate was 34, the 1% low at 18, and the 0.1% low at 12. And when I was in a very densely populated area with this title and this GPU configuration, yeah, it was sort of borderline playable where we were seeing a lot of dips into the lower mid 20s and then we would see the FPS spike back up into the low 30s. Now, once I got outside of town, sort of into the wilderness where population density was just much lower, the frame rate did rise up to more like 35 or 40 FPS with very few dips down into the low 30s or even upper 20s. So basically what I'm saying here is this game is very much borderline playable at 1080p. I would recommend if you're trying to play through this game with a 750 Ti, probably drop down to something like 900p or even 720p to give yourself just a little bit more FPS to make this game just solidly playable across the board. But this is a title that the 750 Ti with some uh, tweaking in the settings, you are gonna be able to run The Witcher 3 with the 750 Ti. Then moving to Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p on the low preset, yeah, this wasn't really a playable experience. The average frame rate was 29, the 1% low of 22, and 0.1% low of 18. The problem is anytime you're in a car driving, that frame rate is capping out at like 29, maybe 30 FPS. Now, when you're outside of a car and you're just walking around, then you're getting a playable frame rate. But for a game that requires you to be in and out of cars all the time, driving around, possibly even in fights in cars, this isn't really an experience I would want to play through Cyberpunk 2077 on. To begin with, on the low preset, I don't think this game looks all that great anyways, which to be fair, almost no game looks great at the low preset, but then combining that with 720p resolution, the game just doesn't look very good. It's not a good experience playing through it this way, so I would just avoid Cyberpunk 2077 altogether if you're stuck with a 750 Ti. And finally, on Hitman 3, 1080p on the low settings, generally speaking, there's no presets with Hitman 3, so on low settings, the average frame rate was 34, the 1% low at 27 and 0.1% low at 26 and this was on the Dubai level and what I got as I walked through this level was just a very consistent frame time experience it wasn't like I was getting high frame rates here but it was very playable even though we were always flirting with that 30 FPS mark as I went through the level so even though the frame rate is pretty low and approaching that sort of dark territory of 20 FPS or lower or in the 20s rather this I would still classify as a playable title, though if I were playing through Hitman 3, just like The Witcher 3, I would probably drop down to 900p or even 720p to give myself just a little bit more of a buffer space between that 30 FPS mark and wherever my frame rate currently is. So you could probably depict me as just a little bit surprised about the GTX 750 Ti. Basically, I did not expect this thing to actually deliver playable frame rates in all of the titles I was throwing at it. Specifically, The Witcher 3 and Hitman 3, I wasn't really sure those titles would uh, even approach playability. Obviously, with those titles, I would recommend dropping down the resolution a little bit more to get some more frames, but it was playable with the 750 Ti. Now, obviously, just like shown in Cyberpunk 2077, and I expect in something like Red Dead Redemption 2, the 750 Ti is not delivering a playable experience in all titles anymore like it would have back in 2014. So if you are stuck with the 750 Ti, then there are certain titles that you may need to avoid altogether. The good news with that is if you're on YouTube or just uh, on the internet in general, it is very easy to find benchmark numbers uh, with the 750 Ti, basically against whatever title you happen to want to be running. So if you have specific titles in mind, it will be very easy for you to figure out whether or not the 750 Ti can actually run it. But the conclusion is really simple. If you have a gaming PC that you're trying to put together right now, or maybe you have all the parts except a GPU, if you're looking for a somewhat inexpensive stopgap solution, a 100-ish dollar GTX 750 Ti is not a bad way to go. 
sure, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of money just like any stopgap solution when the market eventually goes the other direction and you're able to find a really good GPU, you're probably not gonna be able to sell the 750 Ti for whatever money you paid for it. However, that's a lot easier to stomach if you're only putting in $100 or $110 in the first place and maybe you're getting 50 or 60 back. You're only setting yourself back 50 or $60 and in the long run, you may get an extra six months of gain Gaming out of your PC knowing that this GPU shortage right now has no end in sight. So those are just my thoughts on the GTX 750 Ti, but of course, those of you out there that still have one of these in one of your systems or maybe even in your main system, let me know in those comments down below how the GTX 750 Ti is doing for you here in 2021. And of course, if you guys like this video and you wanna see more like it, hit that like button, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.